All right, now I got two more minutes to get the show ready because I'm way behind. <laughs> Howdy everybody, this is Steve KM9G. I'm joined by Jim and Carlos actually Carlos actual. decided to just decided to join us this time. He was supposed to be here last week and if you were here with us last week, you know the show just was not was not the same without him. So uh well, welcome you know, Carlos. Do we I didn't never I, mind. It's not what I, you said <laughs> last week, I'm just saying. Well well we didn't get you know. we didn't get to a successful conclusion of the show last week. <laughs> It's just something Carlos's wife has been saying about him for years. My mic is too hot. Thanks, Wow. Pat. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. How do you know that, though? Did you plant them? Is it you that put the microphones in there? <laughs> she told me. <laughs> I put the baby monitor in. Did I do it backwards? <laughs> Good evening, fellas. Evening, buddy. Good evening. I have turned my microphone down. Hopefully that has helped everybody. It does yeah, actually sound quite a bit you're better. You're better. You were kind of clippy. And thanks for letting me know before the show started, guys. You weren't clipping before the show. You, you were fine. The Does Columbia Miss... pay you to wear those shirts? No, Mrs. Perry pays to buy these shirts. <laughs> I wear these shirts. Just just be thankful that he's wearing the Columbia shirt, because what you would see if he wasn't wearing the Columbia shirt oh, we can, we can. would be no, offensive. No, no, please. No, 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 please, no, no, please. We don't want the channel demonetized. Sam, welcome. It's a, Sam, it's welcome. a Pent Lala Fire t-shirt that probably has <laughs> stains on it or something, so... Thanks, Kurt. So tonight, uh, last week, if you if you guys weren't weren't part of the show, last week we built this coaxial collinear antenna. This is a quarter wave version. In case I'm getting the stink eye from Carlos, and I think what we did differently than what you did in your video, Carlos, is we actually tried to test it to see if it worked. You just put it on the air, and we're like, send it, full send. Well, you know, I have confidence in my abilities to build. I don't know where you get that from, my friend. I listen, it may be misplaced, but so uh, what What length uh, sections are you making out of it? Did you this make was, it? what was this thing like 59.87 millimeters yeah, 50, or something? 59.8 millimeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, and, and I was looking at it like the, the kerf of my cutting tool is bigger than the tolerance of the measurement that we're trying to make. So let's and, just do it. Well, we math, we mathed it, it out while he was, he was looking at a picture or something, 60, right? Yeah. But so for what it's worth, uh, after taking into consideration the velocity factor of this thing and everything else, mine ends up being 11 and a half centimeters. Okay. So so that's a different you know, wire. Uh, this is You were doing a half wave, I was doing a quarter wave. Oh, okay. There we go. That, oh, that, yeah, that, yeah. That, yeah, what do you say? That Lucy, that explains it. So yeah. the quarter wave should work, but the Coco is based on a half wave uh, antenna. 
So you may not get as much gain out of it as you might, as you might have been expecting. So, and that may be also part of the reason why your testing wasn't quite hitting it. I did test. We had a chat behind the scenes. And it isn't just a matter of putting wire in the air because I have the stock whip that comes with the RTL SDR. Actually, it's the new elect kit. That's what I used. And if even if I take that whip and it's fully extended, I compare it to the Coco in the same length, the Coco beats it by more than triple every time. Yeah. So there's something to this. There's definitely something to it, and that was one of the things we were trying to figure out. So to catch everybody up who who is new to the show and hasn't seen this format of the show before, what we're trying to accomplish here is let's have fun, let's hang out, let's do ham stuff all together, and collectively the, the 60 of you watching and the three of us on stream are smarter than the one of us would be without y'all here. Thank y'all yeah. very much. And uh, so last week we tried to have Carlos come on and help us build a coaxial collinear antenna for 1090 megahertz, 1.09 gigahertz. And Carlos had some internet trouble and wasn't able to join us right at the beginning of the show. And so Jim and I just kind of sat here all puckered up, you know, not not ready to kiss each other puckered <laughs> up, but puckered up like, I don't know what to do, puckered up. And uh, maybe I chose the wrong words there. And uh, <laughs> and so we just decided to just I go feel for it. so uncomfortable. <laughs> we just decided Good. You to, to, to build this antenna. We pulled out a uh, coaxial collinear antenna calculator from, from the dark recesses of the internet. We put in the velocity factor of what we thought this unlabeled wire was. And... Um, I believe that what it. I gave you was RG8X, I believe, or I... RG8, RG6X? You gave me a couple of different kinds of wire, and this one is TFC-710 or something like that? I think he had RG8, not 8X. So RG, That's it? RG6 or RG58 by the size. So we yeah. looked it up. That was the point. We, we, we looked it up. We mathed it on stream using the on-stream calculator. It came out to quarter wave was an acceptable antenna to make. So we just picked that because it was the first one on the page. 59.8 something millimeters. And we just started cutting and putting together. And then we started working on trying to see what happens with it on a nano VNA. And the problem with that is it didn't have a connector on the end. That makes so, it difficult. So we kind of... Uh, <laughs> we kind of stuck it into a BNC binding post adapter, which is probably not rated for gigahertz. And we 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 had a we had a great time hanging out, and that's where we got. And at the end of the stream, we got kind of kind of upset, got kind of angry with it. And I went out and bought every 1090 megahertz antenna they made on Amazon. So I've got <laughs> right. these guys here, <laughs> and these are the kind that you screw right into the end of the dongle, and they they promise that they're amazing. So we'll find out. And then the next up is. This little, this this is so cute. It's a little mag mount. It's so cute. Little mag mount specifically that cut is for precious. Ooh, for what 1090. Is Carlos is Carlos is is longer and has more girth. I'm, I'm glad that you said it and not me. What is, what is that? Well, it does. It's you it's can think PBC. about peeny jokes, but it was longer. So it was true. This is, <laughs> it was true. So this is the ADSB Exchange 1090 commercially available antenna. Oh, okay. Well, nice. that's, that's about like the one I have. I didn't buy mine from ADSB, but uh, ADSB like Exchange uh, overall kind of makes a, from my perspective, the best deal on this antenna uh, as, as a commercial antenna. Anyhow, I wish I could take it apart without destroying it, but the PVC is very well sealed and I, I don't want to destroy it because this is for a project for uh, drop zone, not for me. So yeah, it's uh, so let me ask you a question, Carlos. Yeah. So that pull, hold that antenna back up. Yeah. Let me get the PVC started. one. So I saw a project on YouTube, and I don't remember who did it, but he did a cocoa and then put it inside a piece of PVC yeah. and sealed it up. Is that probably what that is, the same kind no, of deal? No, what they did with this. Or is that a coil it, of some sort? There's a coil in here. Uh, there's, okay. there's, there's a double stack of coils to uh, generate the quarters, uh, the half, half wave segments. Half wave. So that's more like a dipole. Yes, this is very much like uh, more like a dipole. I, I, someone did take Welcome one. Back, part. I saw pictures of it. Uh, hang on, uh, Jim. Let me let me go off camera for a second and grab what you're talking about. Okay. 
Uh, yeah, I've I've seen a couple projects where you've taken the antenna like like Steve built last week, and then just feed it into a, a piece of PVC and seal it up. And I'm about to make a mess inside of my gym. Because there we go. when I originally so, saw this, I was like, well how, well, how do you hang this thing? Does it hang upside down from a string, or what's the deal? So this is what you're talking about. I don't know if you saw my video on it or not, but I made a video building this entire thing. This is on a you know hazard fraud uh, case. I probably but, did watch your video. I, I watched several. I've lost track. And uh, this is the PVC you know version of it. So it's this antenna that we're building today that we're talking about okay. today inside of a PVC jacket, and it's just it's inside of the PVC only because it makes it easier to put it outside without having to worry about weather. And it only because, so you can say I can take the cap off. I don't seal this stuff because I want to be able to service it if I need to. I don't know if you're going to be able to see down there with the camera or not, but. Not with your aim. Well, you know. Yeah, he I wasn't am a the guy. Army, army guy. I yeah, am a guy. Yeah, we can see it. So, anyhow, this antenna has been hanging out the window uh, of you know the passenger side of my best friend's ride. Correct, Dave. Uh, collecting data and it does almost as good by the window as it does on the roof of the house so why not so uh, shooter shooter made a comment here that i want to address because i don't know correct he's right how much does it affect the velocity factor i don't know i Placing know that it does antennas inside of pvc does affect the velocity factor because it's so i made a, a copper wire antenna and i placed it inside of pvc and it's the same thing as having like coax you know you've got copper inside of an insulator um how much it changes i didn't measure for that but i did notice that it changed the, the antenna went from resonant around 90 megahertz to resonant around 106 megahertz okay so enough it's it's wow. definitely okay. something you should account for so but it's going to go it's going to go longer it's going to it's going to lower the vf by being inside that pvc tube yeah because it's going to slow me. the velocity slow factor yeah. down yeah yeah okay huh so you need to kind of test this thing before you seal it all up and get too froggy with the resin well you know the the other thing is adsb we're receiving we're not transmitting right yeah so we're not spot on with it it's right. not that big of a deal folks uh, it listen, will it will what? help but you know, build the antenna, have some fun, let, you know, decode some ADSB packets and look no, at, you know. put it on a spectrum analyzer and run a VSWR bridge against it. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what kind of willy-nilly operation is this, Carlos Felix? <laughs> See, I, I, I don't live in theory world. I live in the real world. So I just, you know, make it and put it to work. Well, so, it's interesting that it changes it. And I, it I knew I'd heard that before. And I thought, well, it kind of makes sense because it's it's going inside of an insulator. But uh, why it does, I don't exactly get it, I guess. But it does. Dusty, if we're not for, focused on making it perfect, we are focused on arguing about it. Right. Well, you know, we, we are hams. So that means the three of us probably collectively have 17 different opinions. 17 exact. different opinions. Exact, yes. On the so, same object. <laughs> the, the Patrick next thing, agrees with you totally, Carlos. This is the way, that's right. <laughs> the next the thing that I got was some uh, SMA coax extenders. And it came in a two-pack. And it also came with a bunch of adapters to add to my collection of adapters. And lastly, I got uh, this one here. PCB version of that antenna so we'll See, figure something fascinating. out fascinating hold that um hold that pcb one up would you i can see? actually I, if you want to i can actually give you a side-by-side -side comparison of the pcb and the commercial coco well the commercial so antenna what's, on the, what's down. on the other side of it same thing it. same thing it's just a, a, the ground plane and the antenna um coupled on to P, a pcb so, so there's we'll, no we'll uh, nuggets this out tonight folks there's no um, there's no coil on that or anything to artificially lengthen that. No, because remember this is gigahertz, so that is a 1090 megahertz folded oh. dipole. Fol oh yeah yeah okay all right. So you yeah, unfold that. that. I mean, so we we mathed out that this was a quarter wave. Each of these seg segments was a quarter wave, and if you look, our, our math is pretty darn spot on there, Jim. Son of a biscuit. 
Yeah, that's yeah, it's, that's a it's almost like the internet side. calculator we stole was good. Nope. <laughs> I love it when a plan comes together. So, if do you guys want to look at the live performance of one of those right now? Do it. Share it do up. It. Let me let me share it up and well, you make sure it's not got that other website you were on earlier. But. Well, you know that was you know for us guys to you know educate you. Jim, we, we know that Pre you need some help. Pre-show mood setting. Boy, Puckering and pre-show mood setting. Boy, I am boy. really, 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 really <laughs> I'm, I've been trying to up my innuendo game. My, yeah, you're doing uh, good. My, you're doing my suggestion. Good. All right, so he's got it shared out. Let me add it to the stream and tell us what we're talking about here. So here we have the commercial uh, ADS-B 1090 megahertz antenna. And you can see that we're at this site. And by the way, these the two antennas that I'm showing you are running on two different pies, and they're separated by maybe 20 feet. Okay, maybe 20 feet. Uh, and this is a commercial antenna. Okay, and what you're seeing is that we're at the very top. We have 172 aircraft tr track, excuse me, 151 with positions. And the current message rate is about 800, mega, uh, 800 messages per second, which is, you know, very busy. There's a lot of messages per second on ADSB, which is why they're trying to add an, another, well, they have already added another frequency for uh, non-commercial aircraft to use, 978. So next to it, I have this puppy, which is another Raspberry Pi running the same setup. And the only difference is that it is running that PCB antenna. The, the other part of it is that this, the, this one is outside and this one is inside of my RV, just, just inside of my RV next to a trail, uh, next to a window. And you can see that the performance is, you know, less than half on the PCB, but understand that I'm also inside of the RV and I'm just exposing it to the outside by way of a window. So the body of the RV, atten you know, obviously attenuates the signal. It's made out of uh, aluminum right. or, you know, for those of you outside of the United States, aluminum. It's kind of a, it's almost a Faraday cage, really. Exactly. So the RV itself is a Faraday cage and understand Ish. that, you know, there there's going to be some signal loss. It's impressive that it can it compares favorably you know call it half the performance and it'll be less less than half the performance but not by much that that pcb is indoors i have not taken that pcb outdoors but i'm going to at some point in time in the future just just for kicks and comparing it to this right uh but these two are essentially the same place uh one of them is like from the corner of the building to my rv is probably 20 feet so there you go. There's from the corner of the <clears throat> two of these side by side as a as a means of comparison. It's not, it's the PCB is actually fairly well built for what it is, and especially no more than what it costs. I think my paid I paid something like nine bucks on Amazon for it. I, it's been a few months, maybe a year now. So so I mean, you could you could literally take that thing and and chuck it up on a tree limb or something. Yeah. No. Polarity. DiBiase 777 became a YouTube member. Thank you very much, DiBiase. Glad to have you here. Mm -hmm. I couldn't get um, that guy Carlos to shut up for a second, so I could. No, we can't. It's like he's got to breathe sometime, man. I don't breathe. Uh, the, in, the thing about ADS-B is that it's vertically polarized. So if you put this antenna sideways or oh, at an angle, you're gonna it, break it. It diminishes the receipt. Twenty dB down drastically. Um, on the horizontal side, the, the one, the, you know, the one that I showed you earlier, that's on the PVC. I had it on the deck of my house, and a wind came, you know, heavy winds came by, knocked it down. It didn't receive anything at all. Mm -hmm. So, the vertical polarization of ADS-B is real, and it matters. I've got mine. Well, it's not even hooked to a pie now because I needed to reappropriate that pie for a project. But mine is. Uh, I have a 1090 antenna similar to yours, Carlos. That prefab fiberglass mm -hmm. pole one stick one <clears throat> and mine's on a piece of um two pieces of chain link top rail you know okay in a home home depot bucket full of concrete that works yeah and it so it's like i don't know 18 feet high maybe 20 something like that i don't notice that my reception was a whole lot and that was the next question i was going to ask you since you played with this a whole lot more my original antenna was 
on a mast above the roof of my shop. So portable building, 12 feet high, 14 maybe. And now it's up at 20, and I don't notice that my ADSB reception dramatically it, increased. It will it will increase your horizontal distance. It won't increase the more, about, more yeah. planes farther away, not more yeah, planes that's, above that, you. Th right, right, and I understand that, and that's what I mean. I didn't see. I mean, so I'm about 180 miles from Atlanta, and I'm less than that from Atlanta Class B. So probably, actually, more 160 from Atlanta, probably 125 or so. 140 from Atlanta's Class B airspace, and I'm not I'm not seeing a whole lot of planes out of Atlanta, which I would have thought. And I should also see Jackson, I would think, too, Mississippi. Let but me, I didn't notice that it increased it a whole lot. The horizontal distance. It will. Distance. Uh, let me. I don't have the latest. I, I don't have a a late. A, a, I shouldn't say that. Uh, so there are multiple, obviously, versions of the software that reads this stuff. The version that I have running on my on the two systems that I have at the drop zone are old enough that I don't have the uh, the range rings on it but let me pull up my local uh... wow I hear something in the background yeah I think that's my extra sensitive microphone uh, yeah even the cars driving by are you can hear so if you if you go back to my screen now holy uh, crap so this is the view from my uh, antenna and you can see the range uh, around me plotted out Th that range is based on actual reception right right and what i can't tell you is that i have trees to the west of me and that i have uh, a building and a couple of trees to the east of me but to the north of me, I'm pretty wide open for yeah, you can a mile see and a half, right? And then yeah. to the south of me, uh, there's trees and there's woods uh, probably a, a half a mile away. It's and almost like those that. planes know to stay within the lobes of your antenna. Exactly, exactly. Right. <laughs> are those uh, are any of those MLATs, Carlos, or are those all actual receives? These are all well. I shouldn't say these are all receives. Uh, there is a uh, there. The MLATs are there's one MLAT right there, and that's Southwest Airlines. Uh, For us Skywest. rookies, what's an MLAT? Okay, so that's multilateration. Multilateration. So basically, it shares. I, I send the information. You send that information, and Jim sends that information. And if we're within this, within a, the same receiving plane, and we're receiving the same information, and I'm. Uh, uh, and I don't have enough information to plot it, but you two do. It plots the plane based on what I know, sort of, and what you know, and what Jim knows for sure. Yeah. So, so it's it's like it's like mesh ADSB reception, and we share the data until all of us have the best picture available of the data. So, and when you so, install the yeah. software. I mean, you can, you know, you can set it up. There's settings in the software. You can set it up to it. It'll pull up an, a, a picture of the aircraft on the side if there's one available. And it'll give you the information. You know, for the example, this one is a United Airlines 1886. That's, he'll stop talking in a second. That's been in my head since Steve started that. And I haven't done it. Thank you. But now it's in my head again. Just What is that? Up. Trees to the left of me, trees to the right. Car was <laughs> stuck in the middle. Steelers wheel. I, and I think T.O. was trying to do it, and he didn't. And I'm like, you're killing me, Smalls. Come on, say it, say it, say it. Say I, did it. That on, I did that on purpose. <laughs> oh, my Lord. <laughs> uh, Go ahead, Carlos. I'm sorry. It's driving me crazy, man. Steelers wheel. That's right, JT. <laughs> Steelers wheel. So They're it, only hit. Once you click on the, on the actual airplane, you get the... Uh, specific information on the left hand side of the window uh all the way to you know the accuracy so the accuracy on this is less than 30 meters uh, on accuracy uh, which is pretty stinking good considering the speed of this thing you know you're what's this thing moving at 430 knots you know within 30 meters is more than enough for what we need well i mean the radio signal's coming at the speed of light so you know exactly so, it's a little bit of internet processing time to get the data well no that's not that's no, not internet processing time because that's you yeah this is that. my this is my raspberry pi processing right yeah. so 
And yeah, so, you know, now that we have the theory out of the way, uh, Steve, are you going to connect us up and show us live feeds or what are we doing? We're uh, at this point, we need to get the antennas sorted out or or because I'm having trouble with the nano VNA software. Um, okay. Start installing the software on the Raspberry Pi. So I would just start with the software on the Raspberry Pi. Listen, nothing, you know, nothing beats real world, right? So I would install a software on the Raspberry Pi and then have this connected and ready by a window. You need some kind of reception, right? If you're inside of the house, which you are, the, the signal is going to be are greatly you attenuated. House? How do you know where I am? Well, you know, the cameras that I installed the last time I was there. Ah. Carlos, <laughs> Carlos Patrick dropped a question that's really good. He's been apparently watching too many Smoke and 8 videos. <laughs> as far <laughs> as I know, it, so like what we were talking about with the multilateration thing, if Steve and Carlos and I are all in the vicinity, you know, Lake Michigan area together, something like that, yeah, we're we're sharing well location information with other plane with the planes with our other compatriots but we're not sharing information about jim's house necessarily exactly so i think what he's asking right. is is it's is it feeding websites and by default the answer is no you have to turn that on if you want yeah. to so the kit that i use right. by default feeds adsbx adsb exchange i happen to like adsb exchange if you don't like adsb exchange then don't feed it right uh and, and uh, what's the reason why we like ADSB Exchange? I like ADSB Exchange because they're open about it. Because they're, they're open. There are other trackers available for aircraft tracking. I'm not going to get into their, you know, who, their names, but you know, you you can use Google and learn. Um, and they filter. If if you own a, a, an airplane, you can say I don't want my airplane information to be available on your website, and they will willingly filter that information out. ADSB Exchange says no. The information is available to the world. I'm not filtering it. Go, go pound sand. Carlos so, and I had quite a lively discussion about this one night. I was schooled. So that's why I like ADSB Exchange. There is there are no secrets there, right? So, you know, you have your corporate jet and you don't want you or your wife to find out that you're going from Atlanta to, you know, Memphis to go see your mistress tough luck your wife can find out using a dsb exchange you know the other filter the, the other websites out there will hide it for you look at this this is out of this is in atlanta metro yeah that's the goodyear blimp, blimp i believe an airship yeah and two a. A ship. yeah that's that's uh, the goodyear blimp cool so and, and what carlos has not mentioned as you you can click on these and it will also give you the aircraft type altitude speed and all, all that kind of information as well and what's really cool if if you're into this i don't know what the uh the word is for aircraft people but more than once i will turn on this kind of map and then i will go to um, liveatc.net i usually do it for chicago because i know the area better up there but i will turn on approach control audio and watch the map and then get the picture of what the air traffic controllers are watching and, the and they're calling is these planes out you know, and telling them what to do, you, what to do. And you can see yeah. it live, pretty much live on this map as it's happening, which is really cool because you're listening to the audio and you're seeing you're seeing a radar picture kind of deal. And it's to me, it's relaxing. I put it on at work. Well, the other thing is you can do that for yourself. If you work. if you do multiple ADS, uh, what do you call it? Uh, USB SDRs on the right. Raspberry Pi, you can dedicate one to receiving the ADSB signal. And you can dedicate the other one to receiving the sound and running the sound as, a, as an audio server so you can actually feed your own um, uh, air traffic control uh, uh, receiver on your network. So you can you know, have the live uh, audio from air traffic control locally in your computer or on your network, if you will. So it's handy. It's fun if you like to listen to that kind of stuff. I, I keep track of airplanes primarily because of what I do, right? It's skydive. And I want to know, you know, I want the drop zone to know when there's aircraft around that shouldn't be uh -oh. around. Uh-oh. They found Steve. That's, that's not me this time. What you going to do when they come for you? <laughs> they found Jim. <laughs> Better oh, yet. Oh, man. 
Jim, are you hiding? Mine's fed. Mine's fed a little bit. No knock warrant if they ever serve that. Are you hiding the? Are you hiding the simian in your house? Is that where they're coming? No. <laughs> no. As far as I know, he is not in my quadrant of the United States. <laughs> but you never know. We've heard very little out of him today. I, I think his wife might have him walking in the park or giving her foot rubs or something. Do, I, doing I, husbandly I, things. I'm telling oh, you, yeah. ain't heard word out of the boy all day. Um. So, Steve, are you going to be following the tutorial that I put up on my uh, video? No. Or... No. Okay. For, we're so going to follow Carlos because Carlos is here. Why would I go? Why would I have Carlos here and then go watch a Carlos video? So let's start out oh, with which well. which color would you like? Uh, so the blue one will do great for 1090. So let's use the blue one. It has a built-in saw filter. Hey, Jason. Uh so it has built-in rejection for anything outside of 1090, and oh, it will give sweet. us a better a better list of of uh, aircraft because it's it's feeding the the uh, the system less to filter right less to to churn on. Uh, there are adjacent frequencies that the orange one will process and then have to reject, right? So let's use the blue one and uh, get it connected to your Pi, or I'm presuming you're using a Pi. I am using a Pi. Okay. So then blue one uh, connected to the pie. So once the blue one is connected to the pie and we'll use this one because number one, it's cute. And number two, it's got the coax and everything built in. Very cool. So I don't know how many times I've been driving my car and wanted to know about flight data. So whip out my mag mount antenna and go for broke. <laughs> well, uh, oddly enough, I've actually ran one of those inside of my car, tied to my cell phone to feed it back to the drop zone so they know where the airplane is <laughs> when we're doing a demo. Nerd. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. stinking uh, <laughs> I'm glad I'm not the only one. I was running. I was running. Um, it was not ADSB exchange. I had it rigged up on an old Android phone in my truck for a while. This stinks. On a battery pack. Um the pie, yeah, smells the pie and the app and everything rigged up on an Android phone. I'm going to need to bathe after this. This really smells bad. Which one? The the uh, the, the coax. Oh yeah. Oh, it 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 has that waft of hazard fraught. In yeah, it. it's got it's kind of like this formaldehyde <laughs> smell. Formaldehyde smell. Well, you'll be pickled, right? Formaldehyde. Formaldehyde. Well, I'm not trying to taste. eat it. So. That's not Wuhan coax, is it? <laughs> <laughs> it, Shen, it sure Shenzhen. is. Yeah, it sure is. Mm. All right, it is magnetically mounted to a piece of ham gear. Let's clean up some of this other mess here. All right, so step one. Step the first. I'm going to send it to you in the private chat here so you can copy and paste it into your pie. Awesome. Uh, there is, step the first is to pull down a repository from GitHub. And uh, it's actually a, an install script. Make that muy visible. Very right. good. Very Pseudo good. bash dash c quote dollar sign open parentheses w git dash capital O dash. I I guess Steve hasn't caught on to copy oh, paste. No, I don't want to copy and paste it. <laughs> So this gentleman, uh, Weedoff, uh, I, I'm presuming I'm saying his name right. I'm maybe completely wrong. This is a German fella. If there's a German in the audience, they can actually pronounce it for me. <laughs> Please Thank type you. it in the chat. <laughs> please yeah, type it in the chat. Type the correct pronunciation yeah. in the chat. Phonetically, please. Phonetically. Um, he has built a set of scripts that are fantastic for getting this running. And here we're just blindly trusting his script. I've looked over his script. It looks good. The question no, is, how many how many IPAs did you have when you were looking over that script? A, a few. Carlos yeah, is not okay. a programmer. He's a skydiver. Yeah. Um, Carlos, Patrick has a question for you. So are there certain type of aircraft that can be heard on the orange versus the blue one? Yes. The orange doesn't have a filter. So the orange is better for when Similar you're trying to, to... So the orange is better for when you're trying to listen to the aircraft that are not running 1090. There's a second frequency allocated uh, by the 950? FAA. 978. 978. 978, okay. And what happened was, you know, the, the FAA in their infinite wisdom didn't listen to the FCC telling them, 
you're going to flood this piece of, of frequency. And they said, no, it'll be fine. And well, guess what? <laughs> the FCC was right. <laughs> so they had to get a second frequency. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to urge private pilots that have a DSB running to go to the 978 transmitter instead of okay. the, the 1090. 1090. 1090 because they're wanting to keep 1090 for the commercial side. And even then, the commercial side, some of it is going over to 978 because of congestion on the on the frequency. Mm -hmm. uh, the Both of the dongles are compatible with all operating systems. You just have to plug them in and run the software. The software yeah, it's that a, I run it's is... It's an SDR running. radio. At the, yeah, it's just an SDR radio. End of the radio. day, Dave. Yeah. Yeah. It just happens that the blue one has a 1090 filter on it, so the only thing you're going to get through on it is the 1090 signal. Yeah, and I uh, when I was running mine, which I like I said, I just disconnected a month or so ago to try and build an all star node. I needed the Pi, but um, I bought a 1090 filter. I used a regular SDR, the silver one, the like the twenty five dollar one on Amazon, which worked gangbusters. RTL SDR. Yeah, yeah it works great. It. And I and I just I bought a 1090 filter, which the filter is a bandpass filter yes yep. it is on, a bandpass on 1090 filter. so it looks like this here's below 1090 and then 1090 and it has a pretty steep skirt and then it drops back off so the only thing that's coming through that filter is 1090 and a little bit on either side and that it is not and, much of a curve it is it's pretty pretty harsh and the upside to that filter is that it is before the preamplifier Mm -hmm. Right. So the filter in the blue dongle is after the preamplifier. So it also it doesn't do well with filtering out some of the noise. So if you want a gangbuster setup, get either the blue or the orange stick, put the external filter on it and then the antenna. And then it's a bandpass filter that is only going to allow 1090 through and give you what you're looking for before it gets amplified inside of the uh RTL SDR. Yes, I did, Ron. I absolutely did. So. Okay, so Carlos, you sent me a second command. Do you want me to reboot first or run the second command first? Oh, run the second command before we reboot. So the second command is for to get graphs, performance graphs, out of the system. So the the first script will install the so everything we need to receive. Uh, the second script is to install performance graphs to, to so you can keep track of what's happening on your receiver on a regular basis. So let me pull those up on my receiver here and show you what they look like. And you can go back, you know, if you, you can go to my screen and uh, share that. And you see that by default, it goes to a 24 hour view. And this is the rate of messages and uh, how many aircraft are seen tracks the range of my receiver yes yeah, signal uh, signal level <laughs> the maximum number of max messages per second an aircraft uh, per uh, second message rates cpu utilization this miscellaneous is a chart of the gain that is set up on the rtl sdr on the dongle so right now the, the gain is set up to 44.5 db Overall CPU utilization, the, CP, the system temperature, memory utilization, bandwidth being utilized, disk, I.O., and so on and so forth. And then we can go back and see over time, right, what has happened. Nice. Right? Or we can get, you know, into the nitty-gritty and look at the last two hours. So the second script is to install these, the, what generates these graphs. All right, and that has finished. So, anything else Great. or reboot now? No, go actually, yeah. Before you reboot, there's one more script, and that is uh, the script to look at the signal and automatically set up gain on your RTL SDR. So, third, uh, the, the third uh, command is there, and this is a script that will go into the cron and you can run it by hand if you want, and it'll look at the signal strength of what is being received. The third one and the second one are the same, by the way. Is it now? Uh, I copied the wrong command here. Let me I'm playing cards with my brother's kids, Jim. I know it. I, know. Uh... I was going to say it. You beat me to it. 
Uh, let me find that and weed off uh, art. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, GitHub. You can go ahead and reboot. We can deal with the game script later. So Ooh. you're doing a you're doing a full manual install. I use the prepackaged uh, install from one of the other flight tracker. Exactly, places. and again, it, that that automatically feeds those folks, and I don't want because I'm basically them. lazy, so I just rolled with it. Basically, like that. Jim's basic, basically lazy. I'm lazy, okay. And and by the way, I'm going to mention this. There are several places that do this. ADSB Exchange, which Carlos loves and the open thing i dig that's super cool and i did not i was not aware of that there's also flight radar mm -hmm. and dang it carlos what's the one that i've been using that i can't remember the name well, of now flight aware more than likely flight aware yes flight so aware fl flight aware uh was and they have the pi aware package yes uh they were bought by raytheon oh okay uh not so long ago for a gazillion bucks i Jeez. god i wish it had been you know my idea because you know uh, right, I'd, then I'd we'd be a on a beach somewhere drinking IPAs and 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 being like, cool. you know, what what's we that we're talking about? What is this what's we? Because we? I'm your idea guy, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm your manager. I'm the it's one that's going to take Carlos back off on the beer. <laughs> all right, so third script ran. That was fast. Yeah, so, I used FlightAware, um, and so, it's just a standalone package. So this uh, script will run on a cron later on. You can run it by hand, but basically you need some information before you can run it. That is going to be based on the signal strength. So it's going to adjust the gain on the RTL SDR based on that, what we're getting. So. Oh, you already did it. I did. I was I was catching up in the chat, and I was like, "Dang, son, that was good. I like that. I see what you did there." Um, so. If you go to the IP address and slash TAR1090 of your Raspberry Pi, assuming you have an antenna connected, we should see some signals on there. Assuming there are planes in this neck of nowhere. Yeah, Maybe. people have to get out of Canada. Yeah, eh? Stop sharing that screen. People want to leave Minnesota, I'm sure. Start sharing this other screen. I would. Especially this time of year. Right. Like, oh, okay. look, it's, it's time to go to Florida. So TAR1090. Oh, it's doing Look the thing. Look at that. So um, I am not in New York. No, so you need to move your map to where you are. There's one more command that we need to give it to uh, tell it what your grid coordinates are. I don't imagine you want to give your grid coordinates to no, the world. No, it's fine. So, it's fine. The, the, uh, the grid is big enough that it's still No, I mean, no, no, this is not a grid. I'm talking about the grid coordinates, like exact coordinates of where you oh, are. Lat long? Yep. Oh, I'll send that in the chat. I'm kind of driving to the to the house. There it is. There's Lake Michigan. <laughs> Go north, turn left at uh, Oshkosh. Keep going. You're not to Canada yet. So Caledonia. That uh, you can send that command uh, to your Raspberry Pi. Uh, oh, look, planes. Off. There you go. There you go. So we see what five planes with position, two without position. So we're waiting on them. You see the RSSI; it's in the you know negative nineteen point two right now. I'll give it a, a minute or two, and if it keeps coming closer, it'll get better, and you'll get it. You know that plane. Now he's not so, um, he's not M latting yet, but that's because he hasn't got his right lat long and his um, exactly until you input his altitude in yet. Yeah, until you input your latitude, longitude, and altitude. The MLAT thing is not going to work at all. Right. And it's very picky about that. And Ron is correct. There is no time delay with ADSB Exchange. It's basically, as fast as they can process it, they put it on the map. Um, the other folk do it with a delay depending on the time of the day. They might do a minute or two minutes of delay, which is fine for most things. But I like to look at live data. So I don't want to know yesterday's news. I want to know now. Tim okay. Keller, I think of the fly-in air show. Uh, oh gosh. The ADSB trackers during the Oshkosh EAA oh, were yeah, amazing. Steve, you're going to be getting a ton of stuff on that during the EAA, right? You, you know, sure, he's going to yeah. have to wait a year now, but right, yeah. But those trackers doing EAA were amazing. Just, just a stack up of flames. Just, 
in a row, man. If you've never seen that, it's something to be seen. It really is something very neat to see. So the coordinates you want is how do I type those in? Um, in decimal form. So if you lived at... Uh, so they're on the screen. Uh, let me see. If they're if they want it in decimal, you'll have to convert. Yeah, yeah. Go to Luck, you. You can just plug in Luck, Wisconsin, and uh, plug that in. Oh, so, go go to Google so, Maps. It will give you your decimal yeah, in yeah. the URL. Click on find that. yourself on Google Maps, and your your lat lawn will be decimal lat lawn in yep. the URL. Close enough. There you go. Click home or just drop a pin my, somewhere. It always goes to my IP address, the Bon Bon Tavern. That's where we're going. There you go. That's home. Okay. So you should be able to right click on there and get the grid coordinates on it. There you go. So you right click on it and it'll copy it here. Uh, Done. Okay. It's also in the it. URL at top. I didn't realize the right click thing, Carlos. And see, you know, today you learned something new. Right. From the le least likely of sources. Exactly. Okay. So at the command prompt, cool. you want me to do this like this? Oh, wait a yep. minute. It's showing in the wrong window. Hang on. Share the other screen. Share that. So that format. Yep, exactly. And after you do that, reboot the Pi so that these uh, settings actually take into the system. Rebooting, please stand by. <laughs> the other cool part is that there there's equipment out there that doesn't that runs ADSB that isn't an airplane. So I, I see some of the chat. It's talking about it. Uh, the the tugs at the airport sometimes have ADSB. The fire trucks at the airport have ADSB. Right. And if you're near an airport, you can actually see signals of a questionable item, and it's it's you know a a, a ground support vehicle of some kind doing ADSB. And uh, it's interesting to see them moving around on the tarmac or on the property of the airport. If you zoom into, if you go to ADSB Exchange while we're waiting for the reboot, you can zoom into an airplane uh, airport and see that. Okay, please stand by. Uh, Don, yes, you can do it with his control. It's just easy to just hit reboot. <laughs> Todd, the answer is M L A T, not Umlaut, but you know those people in Wisconsin. Let's see, where was that, Carlos? Globe.adsbexchange.com. Somehow I got the store. Okay, so we're back up and running. And now we should know where we are. I've got nine aircraft that I'm tracking. All right, what do you want me to go to, Carlos? Uh, so go to the Atlanta airport. I'm uh, there. And zoom in down to the ground. And you see that there's aircraft parked on the ramp, and you see them taxiing oh, yeah. around, this guy right? right here is taxiing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then if you, keep, you see the little squares around the, the track? Yep. Those are ground support vehicles. So oh, these, guy, these guys yep. here, yep. yeah, those were ground support vehicles uh, that are at the airport and running ADSB so that they can be tracked by whomever needs to track. Hey, Andreas is here. Thanks, huh? I've been messing with ADSB for years. I never knew that. I just used it to look at airplanes, Carlos. And the thing I mean, is, I knew I knew it tracked the airplanes. I didn't know about the vehicles. I just never noticed it. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, when you configure an ADSB beacon, you have to give it your tail number. And if you don't have a if you don't give it a tail number because you don't have one, it still beacons your location with uh, a hex ID. So but, look here, this guy's this guy's getting a pushback right now from the terminal, from Concourse F. It's, He's it's still in really the ground. Neat to see because if like for example, if you're close enough to the airport, we're like you know I am. I'm. 45 minutes away from the near airport, nearest airport, and I pick up some of those ground support vehicles at times. I have a VPN going from my cell phone to my uh, to, to my ADSB receiver here, and I can, you know, if my mom is coming to visit, I can see her plane land, and I can go from the cell phone lot to, you know, the reception area without having to worry about her calling me. I'm already there. I can see the, you know, I can see her getting the, the plane getting pushed back. Yeah. When she's leaving. So that way I can know, okay, she's in the airplane. She's getting pushed back. She's leaving. I don't have to hang around in case, you know, the, can the flight gets canceled. Uh, stuff like that is neat to see, <laughs> at least. Yeah, I wish. I, so my daughter lives down here now, but she was in Boston for a while, quite a while. 
And so I was flying her down here and she, you know, fly as an unaccompanied minor kind of deal. So when I would send her on the plane, I was required to wait in the terminal at the gate until they notified us that the plane was airborne. And so this would be cool. Yeah, it's it's neat to watch. Because then I would know. So now that plane, this guy is pushed out. That is freaking awesome. I, uh, that makes sense. I didn't realize. I also guess I didn't realize that they had the ADSB stuff turned on on the ground. I mean, I'd seen the airplanes. I never realized they were moving. Just never so paid attention. As long as avionics are on, yeah. ADSB will be on because it's required to be on the moment avionics is turned on. Now, once they go to APU, they may turn them off because a lot of avionics get shut down for with an APU. Right. Not all. Yeah. But, you know, uh, and if the plane ever shuts down completely. Like, you know, let's say we're done with that plane for the day or for several hours where we don't, we're not going to keep an AP running on it. It goes offline as well, right? And yeah. you can actually see the plane taxiing from the terminal to their storage hangar. <laughs> it's or, or to the, or to the storage ramp. Uh, when that happens, it's, it's interesting to see because you see it taxi out and then it disappears. Stealth drive. I think the answer to that is AIS. Oh, yes, Dusty already is. answered you. <clears throat> There you go. And shooter, maybe that's why I didn't know that because I've been using FlightAware this whole time. Um, the other cool thing is while we're while we're waiting on stuff, uh, Jim, go up and this is available on on TOs or you know my ADSB receiver because this is the software that I run. If you click on the U and then zoom out, the very Where top, uh, uh, the top. There you go, yeah. right there. Now zoom out. I get nothing. These are nothing but military aircraft. So if all you want to see are military aircraft that are running ADSB, not now, you know they're not required to because they're government; they can get away with anything. Uh, <laughs> you know, there's also the whole you know mission secrecy thing. Uh, but if you wanted to see military aircraft, you can as long as they're broadcasting ADSB, you can tune into their Nike thing. Fitbit page instead. Exactly. Um, it's neat because every once in a while I'll do that and see a, a, a strato tanker a, a stra uh, just making laps in the sky while they're fueling somebody. It's, There's a C-17, C-27. That's a general jet, I think. C-17, which makes sense since it's coming from McCord, probably. CL-60. I don't know what that is. Oh, oh, if you click it, look at that. A seal is a, a, a citation, citation, right? Yeah. yeah. And you can see exactly where it came and went. And the thing is, yes, even Air Force One runs this. Now, they turn it off uh, when it's Air Force One, but it, when it's not Air Force One, when it's just the, the what, right. uh, yeah. whatever the call sign is or the tail number is, you can see it flying in the sky. So these pictures that they put up of the airplane, is that a picture of the actual airplane or just one that is similar? It depends. Some of them are the actual airplane. And some of them are just, hey, this is every C-130 looks like this. So right. they just put a you know C-130 picture on. Uh, Coming from Mexico, Mexico City, or near near Mexico City. So uh, the thing is, the the military runs uh, planes for the State Department at times. Yeah. So you, this may be uh, something from uh -oh. the State Department making a shuttle run back and forth. Oh, what look at that! This? That's a helo. So, oh neat. Uh, okay, Ground what art. is a government? What is a government helicopter doing in Colombia? Well, exactly what go, what air, air government <laughs> helicopters do. Mind you, this is not the U.S. government necessarily. This could be the Colombian government, right? Because I, you know, I, that never occurred to me. I didn't. I don't. Yeah, okay, that makes the sense. The Colombian government buys aircraft from us. So, how are we receiving? So, my question is, how are we receiving? So we're not receiving it, right? What you're looking at is globe.adsbexchange.com, and somebody okay. in Colombia, someone near near the aircraft that can okay. listen, is feeding it to the to ADSB Exchange. Okay, that makes sense. Oh lord! You know, okay. What is really neat is when you can when you earlier you know a few months ago you could see aircraft disappearing at the Ukrainian and Russian border. They would just go offline. You just turn off the the beacon and military aircraft just turning off beacons uh, to uh, to you know fly their missions, but you would see them you know flying 
in and out of the area, and then they would fly into the into the Ukrainian air, airspace and turn off the beacon, and then fly out of air, air, Ukrainian airspace and turn on the beacon. It's, it's uh, Malta's flying a drone. Huh. Probably. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of immigrants that are floating from uh, the north side of Africa towards Europe, and Malta does run an interdiction uh, unit there. Oh. You know, the Italian government and, Malta, and the Maltese government uh, do that. Uh, the French government does too, for that matter. So, okay, so this is interesting. This is Japan. Yep. And I would assume that this is probably Tokyo, right around here. I don't remember, and I don't read Japanese script. You don't? No. Man, I, I think this is. I think that's that, Tokyo. That is, that I'm almost Tokyo. positive. That is Tokyo. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that's Tokyo, anyhow. But look where you ain't getting no ADSB data from. At least not military, right? But if you if you undo the U, you will see that there is aircraft oh, over there. That's right. I forgot we were just on military. Well, oh no, look not. at that! You're still not getting any from up here. <laughs> well, the Great Firewall. Uh, yeah, or from over here. Yeah. Well, the world has pretty much shunned the das Ruskis. So. Well, that's that's North Korea there, but. You have the Chinese and the Russians in the area, and you know. so Steve. By now, your receiver should have some data, so oh, you should does, be able to yeah. go. So well, be able to go back Steve's. to the receiver, and then you have some tracks on there, and you know, there may even be enough track information to show you a range, a uh, ring on it. Uh, if you zoom out, uh, I don't know that it will or won't, but oh, no, not enough. The other part is if you 150 nautical miles, if you replace, oh, no, I'm talking about the, uh, you know, if you look at mine, where oh, I have the, the antenna coverage map. Exactly. Once you run this for a little bit, you're going to get that on yours. Uh, if you replace tar 1090 with graph 1090, you're going to see the performance graphs of what's been collected so far, maybe 20 minutes worth. Right. But it's, uh, it gives you an idea of what your receiver is doing. Go to the two-hour view because of, you know the twenty-four hour view is kind of kind of empty. Yeah. yeah. So, and the way to test your antennas, the, the way to reasonably test your antennas is to ziggle. No, ADSB is not required for IFR. Uh, I Yet, I think I, they're planning to, but it's not as far as I know at this point. If it's commercial, it's required. If it's yeah. non-commercial, it's not required. Well, he was talking about private, so yeah. Um, and I you know, I've gained than you did. I, I have well, because you need it. <laughs> I do. Right, and and the thing is, the script hasn't run yet, so it hasn't adjusted your gain based on signal strength. If you go back to the top, uh, I can give you an idea of, of what it might do. The top is of based. The that whole thing about ADSB and I don't I'm not 100% current on this cuz I haven't flown in a couple of years. <clears throat> the FAA is trying to get everybody to have ADSB. Yes. The problem is is that a majority of private aircraft, especially aircraft that you can afford to fly to train on are old. I mean, what I learned on was a 1974 Piper. It was tip top, I mean other than it smelled like a 1974 Piper. But, um, you know, the plane worked fine. But a lot of these places, if you want to add avionics to an aircraft, I mean, a friggin' GPS that's official for IFR grand. is 10 to 20 grand, depending on which GPS you get. For yeah. a freaking GPS that does the same GPS yeah. as the crap on your phone. Yep. But it's certified. It does a few extra things. It does. But uh, it's very expensive. And to add an ADSB transponder it's to another an aircraft... Grand is another couple three grand install yeah. aircraft downtime the guys who are you can't just go put this in in your in your driveway on the weekend you got to take it to a certified licensed a and p and you're gonna a &P pay some meaning, cash an a and p is a mechanic for yeah. aircraft you know yeah uh, i'm sorry i was kind of airframe and power ranting. so so for those of you know for those of you that are not in the avi aviation world a and p is a uh uh, airplane mechanic. Airplane mechanic certified for the body and the engine. A is for the body and the P is for the engine. There are mechanics that are only A's and there are only, there are mechanics that are only P's. There, right. but most of them are A and P's. 
So mm-hmm. my point was the FAA wants everybody to have ADSB, and I think oh, Carlos course. is correct. Commercials all have it, and probably have had it for a long time. If I remember right, was the deadline. If I remember right. Yeah, uh, but I think a lot of them had it before then. Oh, if I yes, remember, for sure, a lot of um, them had it before. But but for but, example, your, but you know, my local... your rental aircraft at your local airport Does ain't not. got ADSB in it, son. No, it's probably got an ADB um, that may or may not work, and it um, has a transponder from 1971 that will work. But that's that's it. ADSB is expensive. Um, so shooter ready standby says a portable ADS, ADSB unit is available for the plug into four flight. Yes. And you can make one and Steve made this may be Steve's next project. Uh, it's called uh, a Stratex, right? Similar setup. It requires two ADSB receivers or two a- 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 RTL SDRs. And it, you can build it and put it inside of your aircraft and tie into it with your iPad or uh, iPhone or Android tablet or Android phone and run for flight on your on those devices and get the information from it so that while you're flying you have in, you know information about the aircraft around you the only the only problem with some of this stuff and the reason I was ranting is it's not certified for instrument flight so unless it's certified for instrument flight you can't use it for instrument flight as a aid to VFR flight, all day, no problem. But you cannot use it as your primary navigation for instrument flight unless it is a certified unit. I have a, um, I can't think of the brand name, Lawrence Aviation GPS, a handheld one. And I had a mount that mounted on the yoke of the aircraft. And so it's got airspace in it. I mean, so I, Jim did not wander. I've flown to Florida multiple times and flying straight south from here to Florida Eglin Air Force Base and Hurlburt Field are down there, so there's all sorts of military restriction areas. You don't want to get shut down? And they have they have fast movers down there. No, Jim, just, I'm in a cest. I'm pedaling as hard as I can, man. So you want to make sure you know where you're going. And I'm perfectly legal flying with that, and it's great as a nav aid. You know, I didn't have to use the 1971 VORs, although I know how to use them. It's no big deal. Right. But uh, I cannot fly. I cannot legally fly IFR with that GPS because it's not certified for IFR flight and not permanently mounted, attached, fixed to the aircraft. For those of you not in the aviation world, IFR means I follow roads. Instrument flight rules, <laughs> which means you can fly in weather. <laughs> you can fly in, in zero viz. I, you cannot I fly, fly in zero viz. I fly IFR all the time. I follow roads. Uh, is ADSB similar to APRS? Yes, very much so. Yeah. In the, uh, in the sense that it is a data packet that is transmitted over radio. Yes. Uh, they're different. They're different formats. I'm, 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 I'm willing to go out on a limb here and say, I, I will guarantee you that ADSB is not AX 25, 1200 baud packet frames. <laughs> no, I don't think so. No, but, you know, even, even the FAA is a little bit more, uh, more forward thinking than that. Not by much, but barely. But a- APRS allows you the ability to send um, it's it's automated packet reporting system that Bob Bruninga made. It's not automatic position reporting system. And so what you can do with APRS is you can send your position for sure, but you can also send short messages, uh, you know, text messages. You can, with APRS, you can, you can ask for the local weather where you're at. You can ask for APRS to send a message to your significant other cell phone to which they can reply to you without a license. So there's this gateway between APRS ham radio and SMS cell phones and back. And that's pretty cool. So lots of cool things you can do with APRS besides just send your position. It's a, it's a very tactical messaging protocol. So to Uber Geek's answer, uh, there is software for Windows. Uh, I don't know the name of the software off the top of my head, but I have ran it on Windows before. There's also software for Mac. Yes, right. Um, it's just that I find the Raspberry Pi to be very utilitarian in this. And, it and runs cheap. And che- cheap. Well, it's yeah. cheap. <laughs> Not cheap right now. Cheap well, I mean, if you're making the kind ago. of YouTube cash that Steve brings down every month, oh, right? Oh, well, there you go. Three, four hundred dollars well, for a Raspberry Pi Two is no big deal, right? Your, your average, your average Windows <laughs> computer, unless you happen to have a couple of them laying around, at which point run Raspberry Pi OS on them anyway. Um, is going to be more expensive than this is a Raspberry Pi 3B, and you saw how fast we got it installed during the show, um, from from zero to hero as we like to do here. And 
cheaper so we're, than we're a raspberry pie today and, for sure and and ape hates it so and, even better and even slightly better. faster than a raspberry pie slightly faster than a pie. yeah fellas let me get a refill anybody I, 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 yeah i yeah, need a refill okay, lime back. lime lime okay yeah. jim and, and lime lemon, lime lemon or, or, or grapefruit do you have man drinks it's, it's just fizzy water it's man so, so oh, drinks. I soft drinks i was yeah. thinking about going and getting a pbr i'll go get a pbr i'll go i'll get a beer I'll wait for you to get back so Steve's Damn. not by himself. T-Ray is Steve rolling alone. in it. T-Ray, T man. How you doing, T-Ray? T-Ray, what kind of... T-Ray, you... Oh. Tell me so, that that wasn't you that borrowed that airplane to go run drugs into Mexico or something, right? right? If you can right. afford all them raspberry pies, T-Ray. Good Lord. <laughs> All right, so some real quick station keeping while I've while I've got the the microphone here for a minute. I am working on getting 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. So Team 10K, if you can leave that as a comment down below and be sure to share out this uh, this stream and let people know what we're doing here. I think we're gonna make it. We're at 87 and 8700 and change right now. So outstanding. I, I understand couple. that Steve is jumping out of a perfectly good airplane once he hits 10,000. Uh, I don't know where you. Oh, you're talking about KO4 AFL. Yes, that is correct. This <laughs> this this man does not jump out. I'm I am ground control. I will be your co-pilot. I'll be your radio man. There's a reason why I do software and hardware and not flightware. Shooter, you're correct. ADSB is not for the pilot to know where he's going. It's for air traffic control to know where you are. Correct. If you're flying IFR, which if you're commercial like delta or united or whatever you are flying ifr they don't fly any they don't fly vfr in a 747 <clears throat> that's so they can know where your aircraft is they know your altitude and they know what route you're on the carlos was not There's... kidding when he said i follow roads if you're flying ifr you're on a jetway either a high altitude or low altitude and those jetways are exactly like highways and there so is, that's for air traffic control to route you. There is well. more to it, though. There is even more to well, it. Well, yeah, but I, um, it's not an airplane show. I didn't want to go too deep. Uh, well, the, the neat thing, at least for me as a skydiver, is that they use the information. Uh, advanced ADSB will feed back to, through the same packet system the airspeed and the, gra and the relative ground speed of the unit as well, uh, obviously, it already has direction, right? So it lets me forecast right. winds aloft every thousand feet without having to worry about the crummy forecast that the FAA provides, right? So I'm able to get real uh, winds aloft information for my navigation when I'm under a parachute. I might, I'm not guessing anymore. Is it 17 knots or is it seven knots? Well, look, it's 15 knots in reality. So it makes it, it makes things way better for me uh, as a canopy pilot. You have a rat in front of your front of your camera. Jim's it's, cameo. It, it's internet cat. Yes, and Kurt. This is, this is how we get the super chats. That's the super chat cat. That's the super chat cat. If you want to see the more of the cat, leave a super chat. If you want to see less of the cat, leave, leave a, super a super chat. chat. <laughs> super chat. Yes, that's exactly <laughs> how. If you want me to work. keep my shirt on, you should really leave a super chat. Otherwise, you're gonna see some man boobs. I'm just saying. Yeah, I like boobs. So cat control for ADSB here. Uh, uh, Steve, are you going to put a different antenna on to see how it does comparatively? I can do know? that. Yeah, boys, I'll uh, be back. I need a refill. So, you know, the 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 real way to fairly test this and these antennas is to let them run for a week, and that way you have a week's worth of air, aircraft information on your graphs. Um, but you know, we don't have that kind of time here today. Oh, excuse me. Um, the uh, I get the formaldehyde out of the way. Formaldehyde, formaldehyde. See, every time you say formaldehyde, all I can think of is uh, "Good Morning Vietnam." You know, the beer and Bobby Bob beer has a little formaldehyde for for taste. So, really, you don't remember that? Oh, I do. I was I was busy making sure I didn't yank the microphone across the. Oh, okay. The well, that's important. So. So we're going to go worse because this one plugs directly into the dongle and the dongle's on my desk. So I can see if I can get it far enough away from the desk, but I'm, I'm connected. Um, let's see. I'm, I'm looking through the chat, seeing if there's any, uh, any questions that I might've missed that uh, need to be answered. Jim's picture is from Wii. 
Um, That's Jim's me. So. So we're down to six now. We had fourteen. Yeah. Uh, so you can see the difference in performance for the antenna and for the location of the antenna, right? If you were to move it to the same place where you had Ooh. the other antenna. T-Ray. Yes, sir. T-Ray. We will make sure T-Ray keeps his yes. shirt on for sure. <laughs> yes. If, if he, for some reason, decides not to, we will, you know, we'll administer electrical shock therapy. Um, let's see. T Ray is uh, living large with nine raspberry pies. That's that's very nice. Uh, uh, that's a lot of money you're sitting on T Ray. You could you know you could go on eBay and sell uh, you know a bunch of them for a hundred bucks a pop. There you go. Oh, Jim's back. I can hear, hear the PBR. Milwaukee's <laughs> finest, baby. And and Jim, in case you didn't catch it, T Ray graciously uh, super chatted. You know, fifty six dollars and seventy six cents to keep your shirt on, on. Okay, Excellent. on. It's an oddly specific number, T Ray. Is there a backstory to that? There, I I was wondering that. I'm trying to figure out if that's like a caliber or what that is, or I don't know. But T Ray, thank you. You're awesome, man. T Ray, T Ray was our <laughs> neighbor at Huntsville, and I think he's going to be our neighbor next year. It was it was only um, awkward for the first night. Right. And then it was yeah, just yeah. like family. Right. Well, we, you, we were in Alabama. All right. So we're, we're down to four <laughs> aircraft on this thing. That did not do well. So which antenna did you have on before? Uh, this is the one I just took off. And the one uh -huh. I had on before was the, the oh-so-cute little mini mag mount. This, okay. Give uh, give the PCB a try. Yeah, that's where I'm headed next. i got to line up adapters and, and such. You know, but... Patrick, so, yes, there is. It's whatever remote software you put on the computer. Yeah. And then if you have, um, you can open it to the internet, not recommended. Uh, you can open it to some place you're going to be if you know the IP address, which is what I do because I have it open to work, so I can jump on mine from work. You could VPN into it. You can use VNC. You can use remote PC. There's 27 ways to remote into it. Probably the easiest is to put, like, VNC on it. Yeah. And then just uh, remote into it because VNC will do the tunnel for you automatically. Well, what I would do is I would use SSH and t and set up an SSH tunnel. Or you for, could get complicated and do that. Cause right. Yes, Carlos... absolutely. It's complicated. You know, I'll, I'll tell you. You <laughs> may not be an IT dork like us, Carlos. I'm trying to. I'm it's trying to go normal. Channel. Okay. Uh, trying to talk I, to the normies. Theory. I'm going to give you the normal, easy way to do this. There's a there's a thing called tail scale VPN. <laughs> It's, don't laugh, Jim. It's easy to install, so it's, it's easy, so easy that even you can do it, Jim. Uh, oh, really? Yes. So Tailscale VPN is what I use for getting to my, the one that I have, the ones that I have at the drop zone. So it's click, go, install, done, and it's permanently connected. It it works great. It is it is easy, but whatever. There's 27 Eight. ways to do it, Patrick. Was Nine. My point. I can feel the aircraft coming in. I bet. That's what she said. <laughs> so we were we were at fourteen with the with the mini mag mount. We went down to six with this and the PCB is climbing at ten right hey, now. Hey Tim. Poor poor Steve, he does not sorry man, you opened the door and I my brain couldn't help itself. I had to I had to go through it. So which antenna is this? The PCB the PCB one? Yeah, we're up to ten. Eleven. How close how closer to the window is it? Uh, about a foot. Okay, so it's Which, close enough that close enough that it was close. It, it how simple. how far are you from Minneapolis, St. Paul? Hour and a half. Ninety miles ish. Is about the antenna the, on that, that side? Far on the map. Is the, the antenna on that side of your house? No, I'd have to go like this. <laughs> okay, what's your point? I, I'm now like this. I'm now pointed closer towards. I'm you know. Three if only feet. it had a wire on it that you could just stick it over there. It's not long enough. It, it's on the wire. What's it, what's going to hold it, Jim? I, I would just prop it up against the windowsill. Yeah. It, this this doesn't have any. Just so? stick you, it in the window. You, you got just, tape, bro? You, know, you ever gaffer tape, son? God. What are kind of ham ain't got no gaffer tape? Are those blinds metal or are those blinds wood? They're wood. Okay, so you're okay with the wood. Yeah, ones. I got some fancy wood ones. Anyway. 
But look, you're up to 11. <laughs> that, that three feet didn't make any difference, Jim. Neither did the argument. Hold but still. Thanks. Thanks, Stealth. Thanks. Good signal. Right there. Thanks. My arm was getting <laughs> tired. The crowd, we were entertained. Okay. Yeah. So the best antenna is the mini mag mount so far. Uh, okay. Well, you know, I like where my was house. the mini mag in comparison to where the uh, exact same spot where the PCB okay. is? 13. Well. We're getting close. Maybe the PCB Ed, is equal. Ed said duct tape. Gaffer tape is even better, Ed. I, I love it. Yeah, for tape. So if you were here before the show, there weren't any links in the description. If you came in during the show, then you will have links in the description to all of these antennas. But if you refresh the show, they will be down there in the description where you can find these antennas. And uh, later on, I'll come by and in put the, the, um, the, the dongles are at adsbexchange.com. So you can get the dongles there. And then how, much, the with that? how much were those dongles, Steve? These were handed to me at Dayton. Oh, okay. Well, so I don't know. Them. But I'm, I'm guessing 20 25 bucks. Not bad. Uh, they're available on Amazon as well, so you may want to throw an Amazon link on there. Yeah. For, uh, uh, oh, shoot. Yeah, the orange one is $35, and bad, the blue yeah. one, blue, well, that's not a dongle. There we go. The blue dongle is $40. Uh, my suggestion is if you're going to do this, buy the orange one and buy the, uh, buy the external filter. Yeah. And you're going to get a little bit more utility out of it because then you can use it for other stuff besides ADSB. And uh, if you decide to do this, also, I would point out, and ADSB Exchange has a very well stocked store. It looks like, yes. And you can probably find all this on Amazon as well. But don't buy the dongles and get all happy when they show up before the weekend, and you're going to ADSB all weekend, and you realize you don't have the right cables. And because you live in a second tier town with no electronic store of any kind. You can't find AKA America, AKA most of America. You can't find an SMA mail to N mail connector to hook up to your antenna. Just saying, I'm not bitter. Just saying, Jim, I bet you could do this with your 9,700. Yes. Very expensive dong uh, SDR dongle. Yeah. Well, uh, let me see. It'll tune it. I'm sure. Well, no, I don't know if it will. Because it's got 1.2. Well, I mean, I don't see why I couldn't listen to 1.0. Well, find it's, out. it's got 1.2, but does it have the right reception type, you know? Because I don't think this is S sideband. I don't think this is... Uh, it's AM. should be AM, is it AM, Carlos. I would almost bet you. I don't, I don't know. I Like, I don't know, man. What? Nah, it's FM. I it's know. Be FM. Well, AM or FM, either way, but I'm sure it's nothing. Alexa, turn comm center on. I took the U, U bolts off of it, but there you go. Interesting. So on the orange dongle, there is some writing. I'll show you the dongle so you know which one I'm talking about. The orange one, because that's no, like it does not tune it. Very specific. It says RTL twenty eight thirty two U slash R eight sixty. So that's the radio chip. TXCO, TCXO, I always say that backwards, TCXO with amplifier for 978 megahertz. So transistor, temperature controlled transistor, temp, uh, crystal. temperature controlled crystal oscillator. Thank you. There you go. So it's it's going to, these things do get hot. So the fact that it's temperature controlled is important. Uh, so it's, it's for 978 megahertz. So it should have a bandpass filter in it for 978. Uh, uh, Tim, I... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, brace yourself. Uh, I have a short run of LMR four hundred for for my primary one. It's it's UHF and it matters. I was using uh, RG uh, RG eight before RG six before, and when I switched the coax for the feed, at least for it was this, like Angel sang to you, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yes, it, it was. It, it was a massive difference. So. I have one. I, I have uh, one that I bought early. That is, it's a good one, but it's, it's low loss coax, but it's not as low loss as RG4 uh, as a LMR four hundred. And I'm trying to figure out where the label on this is. And of course, I took this to somewhere, and the antenna fell, and it broke the connector. So I need to re-terminate it. Whoops. Tim Keller, Whoopsie. the higher the frequency. 
the more sensitive you get to loss with a given type of coax. Because there ain't much yeah. of it there in the first place. Yeah. Right. Very, so what what works well at what works well for HF it does not necessarily work well for what is this? Is this still UHF? I guess at ten ninety. Yeah, this is we, UHF because it's. Uh, yeah. We're not it's into a, SHF uh, yet. No, it's under okay. three thousand. It's under uh, the break is at three thousand. So, yeah, so this will okay. also do airband and A cars. A cars is fun. Um, so a cars is, is a, air aircraft automated reporting system, I believe. Um, and so ACARS is what the airlines use to send and receive messages from their ops centers to the aircraft. You need this so, side of the radio here. <laughs> well, yeah. And he would probably know more about it for real. But so like if I'm running the Southwest Ops Center and I need to tell Southwest Flight 1234 that or they need to tell me that they've got a medical emergency they're going to send an ACARS message and all that crap runs on UHF and, and there's several free programs kicking around for Windows and Linux so that's um, much that, more like APRS it's words it's yeah. text messages it's airplane text messages it's not automated it just is um there's a lot of it that's automated but it's also can be manually generated messages so like, you know, you may have an aircraft that says, hey, we have a medical emergency. We're diverting from our filed plan to nearest airport O'Hare. Please have the equipment ready, blah, blah, blah. Something like that for them to tell their op center or for their op center to tell them, hey, you know, we've changed your flight plan or, or whatever. Whatever they would need to talk to their ops people for. And so they use that. And I think it's also a re position reporting system as well. Um, when they go over the ocean, there's some specific messages then that when they go feet wet and feet dry again. So Tim, that kind of thing. Tim, to answer your question, that's exactly what I'm doing. Addressing and reporting system. Thank you, John. I knew I wasn't right, but I was close. So Tim, uh, that's exactly what I'm doing. I have a two and a half foot run of LMR 400 from the antenna into a box that I built and put outside and then I'm powering the pie over POE. And it's been outside for years now. And really? Not have not a peep. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. You didn't tell me that. I didn't know that. If you told yeah. me, I wasn't listening so, to you. What I would suggest, oh, I and this is just that. this is just me, you know, with an hour and change of, of thought process into this entire gamut here, I would say put the pie or whatnot inside the house and then use USB cable and then attach the dongle to the end of the USB, attach the antenna directly to the dongle and put that in a waterproof enclosure, the, the dongle part of it so you have the, almost no coax the downside of that is that usb is not shielded very well and it will pick up noise and it will mess with the signal that you receive and i know that from experience hmm. interesting because that's what i initially tried to do and my reception was drastically cut the whole it, thing son. outside on wi-fi choke it you need so, some toroids so yeah you would need to put some toroids on it to, to mm -hmm. choke it out or do what I did and just I built an enclosure, uh, a tiny like a box, uh, an Apache case. Yeah, kind of like a actually. Well, you know, here's the here's yeah. One of them, I'll right? take a Harbor Freight right. case and use it as your template. Right here's one of them. Right, uh, this is one of the boxes that I run at my house, and I this is the one I throw in, the, in my car when I want to go to place uh, a drop zone that doesn't have it. And there you go. Exactly, Cape Cod. It's, it's got a. You know, GPS receiver so that I can set my frequency Bat -bomb when coordinates. You know, you know, my yeah, my coordinates wherever I, whenever mm -hmm. I go, wherever I go, and you can see that it has the receiver and the 1090 filter on it, and then it's fed by, you know, just this is the antenna that I built on my video, right here. So, so where bit. does that where does that sit? Do you leave that outside? Uh, no, this sits actually sits right next to the window. Uh, okay. in my garage and uh you know when i go places like for example um there i i work at a drop zone in michigan that doesn't have a, an adsb receiver and for me it's useful to know where exactly where the plane is at because it lets me know how long do i really have between the plane landing and me needing to be me needing to be on it the drop zone may say it's five minutes but reality says that the plane can't descend that fast, so maybe I have seven minutes. 
or maybe the drop zone says it's five minutes and I see that the airplane's actually on a, on final. I'm like, no, nah, I have more like three minutes. I need to get, right. you know, I need to get in gear. So when I travel to drop zones that don't have an ADSB receiver on site, I take that with me. I take a bio NO to power it up. I use my cell phone to connect to it. Life is grand. Well, so, you burnt all the gunk off of it, Brent. Yeah, that's just advanced cleaning. Yeah, dude. Just, so it should be nice and nice and ashy right now. Just go out with your wire brush and scrape it off, and then Brent, put, you put tell a the little, old lady that's what you plan to do, son. She don't put a little know no fresh different. olive oil on it, and then that'll protect those right. grates for next time. You, you just bacon season grease. it up real good. Ooh, bacon, bacon grease. Bacon grease better. is better. Yeah, even better. I got a jar of bacon grease here. I'll, I'll mail it to you, mm. Brent. I wonder where that jar of bacon grease came from. <laughs> yeah, Pat. One of these sitting in your attic is a good plan. I have a metal roof on a brick house, so the whole attic thing is kind of Jim, a no-go for house. me. That's right. Well, got, they wrote got, a song about me. We got two little Cessnas out here. Nobody's got a picture of a Cessna. You don't have. You're not sharing. I know. It buddy. wouldn't make any difference. There's no picture anyway. Like there's. Who doesn't have a picture of a Cessna? Well, it's, it a, it's not they a don't have a picture Cessna. of that aircraft. Have, yeah, they don't yeah. have a picture of that aircraft. So it's a Cessna 172, 182. 172 uh, it's a skyhawk so it's got two wings on top of the cabin and a fixed pitch <laughs> propeller it's got two wings and nice. some wheels nothing gets past you jim <laughs> right i am a licensed pilot and this one's a cessna uh, tr182 turbo nice. that has a variable pitch propeller and a and a nice engine on it to boot <laughs> yeah. that's a piper that's a high performance one uh, one wing. Hey, look, that uh, that PCB antenna is doing pretty well. You're getting 17 right now. Actually, I switched it back to the mag mount because I oh, okay. was tired of holding it up. Uh, and keep in mind that you holding it up might have been also attenuating the signal, right? Improving it, yes. You're correct. Attenuating Cape Cod, sure. I could not remember. It's been so long. <laughs> I never I never got signed if, off on constant speed. If that's speed. your definition of an attenuator, I don't know why you're an extra and Jim is not. <laughs> that test is... Oh, Lord. Well, two of us on stream passed it. I'm just saying. Uh, yeah. yeah. Well, and one of us did not. So That's okay. You, you'll try again. And I was there for all three of the tests. Yeah. <laughs> yes, he was. <laughs> two, <laughs> Beavis. I only tested twice. No, I didn't no, test no, no, I was time. there for he my own for test, Jim. And uh, he was there for me. And he was there for <laughs> my test for, as well. For mine, for Jim's, and for Carlos's. Put the bag mount on a cookie sheet. Right now it is mounted to my MFJ 849, which is probably pretty darn close to a quarter wave ground plane. Let me let me measure it. I have I have quarter waves here I can measure it with. Oh, it's a half wave. It's a half wave ground plane. I found that the Excellent. bigger the cookie sheet, you know, so you know, this is a a, a fun uh, Pro tip. A, a fun side aside. Is it the bigger the cookie sheet, the better it works. So you need the bigger the ground plane, the better it works. Uh, and there's a formula for that. Um and I read that, and if you guys Google it, it's, it's a thing. Depending on the band, and I want to say for two meters, it's like 42 square inches of ground plane, which ain't much. So, honestly, a cookie sheet is absolutely useful. I, um, you know those, uh, those cookies that your grandma ha had in a, in a blue tin? You know, mm -hmm. those. I still uh, buy them. Oh, Danish butter cookies? Oh, yeah, yeah, those. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those. Yes. So my, I, I was visiting my sister, and what I had was my pie with the dongle. I didn't have the, the case that I have now because I didn't want to hey, travel Torsten. with that. And I you. put it on her roof with on one of those cookie tins, and it worked great. And then, you know, I was driving to, to the local Walmart to get something, and I saw that it had cookie sheets for a dollar. So I bought a cookie sheet. And I swapped it, swapped the tin out for the cookie sheet, and it did even better. Mm hmm Yeah, and it's amazing. When I when I've read that, I was like, get out of town. And there's some there's some formula for you need, and again, it's based on the frequency. But I think for like two meter four forty, your average cookie sheet that's in your wife's cupboard in the pantry right now will work. Just don't I tell actually, her. I actually ordered a couple of cookie sheets off of Amazon, and then she. Then she decided she wanted new cookie sheets. She was going to throw some out, and they were like laying on the table. Take those out to trash when you go to the no, shop. No. Oh. Oh, really? Yes, Thank dear. You. Yes, dear. I will take them to the trash. Because <laughs> they were older yeah. ones, and they offended her or something. I don't. Know. The other thing is, you can also change yeah, the, ma fun. the map. You're you're showing it right now. You can change the map to charts or to open streets, and 
So oh, yeah, can, change it to the... Um, Oh, Here's your geez. sectional charts. The okay, worst that's map the ever invented. That's the VFR chart. Change it to the IFR in route. Oh, hang on. Something just went crazy. When we were talking about highways earlier in the sky, oh, yeah. this is is this the low in route? I didn't know which one you picked. So there's a high in oh, route and a low in route. High well, end there's two route. of them. Okay. You told me to pick high end, Jim. Yes, dear. <laughs> so these are the highways. <laughs> And what you'll see is all these aircraft are generally going to stay on these routes. They will literally fly the line. And then depending on which direction they're going, they'll be at an Pro tip at, a, at a, an odd altitude or an even altitude, um, thousands of altitude. So, Lord, if I remember this, um, anything from 0 oh, yeah. to 180, 0 to 180, they're like at... 2500 and 4500 and direction and yeah yeah each, and then, each altitude it's it's a it's like an oreo compass. well ha half the compass is half the compass is the even numbered hundred thousands and the other half of the compass is odd numbered thousands and then usually the 500 in the middle of that odd thousand so 3500 5500 7500 it's yeah it's Well, that makes sense. So we only get the terminal area chart around the terminal. Around the terminal, yes. Yeah. This would be this would be MSP. I was like, and my internet connection's not that slow, folks. No, that's just the only place that map is in this. And area. you can see that's an eye chart, brother. Now, just imagine oh. you're holding the yoke of a 1974 Cherokee with your readers on, with one hand looking at a paper map in the middle where you're of trying an to emergency. maintain altitude. No, not in the middle of an emergency, but I'm trying to maintain altitude and not screw up badly. Dear God, please don't let me screw the pooch. Thank you. Amen. And I'm trying to read that dang chart. Upside mm -hmm. down wedding cake, man. Yeah. And oh. and you need to know this stuff in order to pass your drone pilot's license, even though you will never, never, ever use have that as a drone. any interaction with this chart whatsoever. Yeah, this is bad. Joe Brett. Joe Brett has his drone pilot license. He he loves those charts. He does. He says, I love those charts. Said no one ever. No one ever. ever. Um, and have you and Brent, on this been show, updated since the 60s. On this show, Brent, you get all sorts of stuff, man. Have you explored the other buttons on the right-hand side? Oh, I've, I've explored, yes. Whoa, okay. whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I, took a, I took a deep breath. I experimented. Okay. Yeah, so each of these little buttons does something. And these are mnemonics. Like uh, P is, is show planes that are no longer on the screen. i got to get rid of that map. Oh, man, I hate that map. Yes. Go to, uh, go to open street maps or something like that, or Carto. The thing is you can uh, show NOAA weather and NEXRAD on it as well. Yeah, I was trying to do that. You can also show, um, Carlos, isn't there a... Um Air to air refueling. Scope, scope controller view kind of thing with a black background. I don't know. Uh, there's a dark version of the of the open without without terrain. Map. What the thirty two aircraft, man? Yeah. I mean, so so P shows me all the aircraft that I can currently see, which is thirty two, plus all the ones that I have seen. These dark blue ones are no longer squawking in my neighborhood. They're they're out of my range. But I, I heard them once upon a midnight clear. No, those are mode S. Okay. Well, I thought I knew something. But when you hit P, it shows you planes that you can no longer see. Mm -hmm. And R if you is, hover... Any R is, go ahead, Jim. R is follow a random plane. Yeah. That's kind of fun. And if you hover over the over the letter, it'll give you a tooltip on it. That's, that's what, I, back to the yeah, mag that's what I was doing. We're, we're back to the mag mount antenna. I got tired of holding the PCB up. But he the PCB antenna did, did work very well. I, I can recommend the PCB antenna and the mag mount and then the the little little stalk thing. This would be great for like a portable go box type setup if you wanted to do that. But I I, I wouldn't recommend this one. So uh, have you connected your Coco yet? I don't have any means of connecting it. There's no ends on it. But you had a week to buy connectors, man. Yeah, and I chose not to. <laughs> I tell you, you know, kids these days. It's like playing cards with them. If only, if only people had seen me build, you know, coax ends before on on my channel. Yeah, once or twice. 
once or twice. I, I do things. Um, you know, speaking of doing things here, I was I'm working on this video today. Uh oh, what's that? That's my ADSB, APRS. Show it again. My QRP Labs APRS and Whisper Beacon. I was putting these on, as you can see, they're terribly, terribly done, but it's the best I can do with my limited soldering skills. Yeah, son, I'm going to have to teach you how to solder. I know I'm how to solder. Teach him how to say no, the you, word. No, you Tell don't. You. I, just, I just know how to solder terribly, is all. Yeah, there's, <laughs> there's no L in solder. There is. No, Carlos, no. Carlos, but, neither, neither of the two languages you speak natively put an L in that word. Uh, yes, yes, they do. Yes, they do. You know, just ask Callum. You don't speak yeah. Scottish natively. Oh, uh, well, that's... I'm not talking about Scottish. I'm talking about English. Oh. Inrish, Inrish, do you speak it? Say what again? Say what again? I dare you. I double dare you. <laughs> nice. What are you doing, lad? That's a terrible Samuel L. Jackson accent. <laughs> It wasn't it's, supposed to be Samuel L. Jackson. It's like just a, Callum just imagine that entire Pulp Fiction scene. Yeah, in imagine Scottish. that entire scene in Scottish. That's awesome. I mean, what do they call me. the Big Mac? A Royale with cheese. <laughs> Big Mac's a Big Mac. Quarter pound of cheese, a Royale with cheese. <laughs> Royale with cheese. Excellent. All right, any fun. any last minute thoughts before we, we shut this thing yeah. down? We are over time. Oh, hazard fraud, hazard those fraud. Aren't, those aren't bolt cutters. Uh, they're they're, they're wire strippers they, at hazard fraud with the built in crimpers. That they're really nice. Picked they look like today. knockoffs of the knockoff vice grip wire. Strippers. I've got the Irwin. Yeah, I've yeah. got the Irwin ones. Because yeah. Irwin didn't make those either. I'm, I can guarantee you they came off the exact same assembly line as the Probably. Irwins did, and the other yeah. seven brands. Except these are half the price. Right. There are some things you fraud. can get. There are some things you can get at Harbor Freight that are right off the exact same assembly line, and there are some things that are actually not bad at all, and then there are some things that are just one-time use. Raven said I had a wee terrible Scottish accent. Thank you, <laughs> thank you, Lass. <laughs> Paperwork Ninja has it absolutely correct. That's more of a Scottish accident. Aye. Yes. Well, you Captain, know, it'll I... take me three hours. That he's he's imitating Michael Myers, imitating a Scotsman. <laughs> Get in my belly. Oh shoot. Uh, what else you guys got you know got going? Wes is the best ham here. Well, me and uh, the smoking ape will be on Wednesday night at seven PM on my channel. Doing We are we are having a digital voice best AMA kind of thing. What, you know, I, Live I stream. Ask, why do you do that to yourself? What? Digital voice. Why would you do that to yourself? It's, it's, it seems like a headache. It's entertaining. Okay. It's no more of a headache. It's no more of a headache than HF is. It doesn't require me to go outside and fiddle with the antenna in July in Alabama. So there's that. So you guys have seen this Radioity GD88? Let's see. Watch this. Ooh. Oh, you fancy, fancy son. You fancy. fancy. Yeah, he is. So, I'll have a video on how to do this coming out here pretty soon. Plus, an updated useful code plug editor. I changed the uh, logo on my Kenwood D74 today. Same thing. And you can do that on the, you know, you can do that on the 6X2, right, Steve? I've done it on the 6X2. Okay. So anyway, yeah, the Smoke and Ape and I will be on my channel at seven on Wednesday night to do a digital voice show live. Rumor has it that the Smoke and Ape probably won't talk on the radio. Ooh, look at you, that is nice. I like that. That one Fancy. came from Tom. Fancy pants. I'm telling you. Get in there. Got to shove it in there. So many jokes. This time I this time right. I, I behaved. I thought the same thing, Carlos. I just let it ride, man. Just yeah. I just wanted to point out that I behaved. I just wanted to point out that I behaved. So thanks it's for all. hanging out with us. We were successful. <laughs> for, it's it's very rare that we are successful on the show, but we were successful on building an ADSB uh, report receiver grapher 
multi-mapper oh, awesomeness that. thing. Dingus, does, laddie. Does this Dingus. thing upload back automatically to ADSB Exchange, or do no, I have to go configure not. it? You have, we have to do one more step to upload to ADSB Exchange. Okay, so, so we have at least two more episodes. One to get this back up on ADSB <laughs> Exchange, <laughs> yeah, and, and the other one to get the ACARs, because I want to see what that ACAR stuff is, yes, if I can hear any absolutely. of that here. We can do that with the other, with the other dongle. Yes. Right. So we can add that second dongle and do the ADSB Exchange feed later. And the same antenna should work. Absolutely. Mm, not for eight cars. No, no, not for eight cars. Eight cars is a different frequency. Eight cars is down in the no. Eight cars is down in four something. I was gonna say I thought it was low B, low UHF. So four hundred ish area. I don't remember exactly. And there's multiple frequencies for eight cars, and it depends on what country you're in. You can Google it. it can figure it out. You know, it's, that's, UH, yeah, yeah. it's UHF. So be sure to be subscribed to this channel because two things. Number one, you'll know when we do the ACAR stream. Hint, it's next Monday at 6.30 Central. And <laughs> you'll also help me get towards the goal of 10K by the end of 2022. Make, so, ju make Steve jump out of an airplane. Yes, I, I will support KO4 AFL <laughs> as he decides to jump out of the airplane. <laughs> I'm going to go get myself a quart of haagen ice cream to make sure I come right over the weight limit. Okay. <laughs> All right, Jim, Carlos, thank you very much. Everybody in the chat, glad to hang out with you once again. We'll see you next time. See you guys.